In this video, let's see what are all the antibiotics we can prescribe in pregnancy and lactation. Prescribing antibiotics in pregnant patients is a special consideration because we should consider the effects of these antibiotics not just on mother but also on to the fetus. And as I mentioned in the previous video, antibiotics should not be prescribed during first trimester and to be more specific, we should not prescribe antibiotics between 18 to 60 days of pregnancy. This is because during this time period the embryo is very much susceptible or vulnerable to various teratogenic agents. And now moving on to various FDA categories of antibiotics. In the previous video I have discussed in brief about various FDA pregnancy categories and in this video let's see what are all the antibiotics falling into different FDA pregnancy categories. So starting with drug category A, we have no antibiotics under this category. It means no antibiotic is absolutely safe to mother as well as fetus. And then we have drug category B which includes the following group of antibiotics. Penicillins, cephalosporins, and then we have various macrolides such as erythromycin or ejethromycin and we have metronidazole. So penicillin, cephalosporins, erythro or ejethromycin and metronidazole do come under pregnancy category B. And then various drugs falling under drug category C are fluoroquinolone such as ciprofloxacin, clarithromycin which is another macrolide and we have various sulfur drugs such as dapsone. So all these ciprofloxacin, clarithromycin and sulfur drugs come under pregnancy category C. And then various drugs falling under category D are aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminoglycosides.aminogl
and erythromycin it's available in three forms base form succinate form and acetylate form so base form and succinate form can be administered safely in pregnancy but acetylate form should not be prescribed during pregnancy because it causes hepatotoxicity to elaborate this acetylate form causes swelling of cells lining biliary canaliculi within the liver causing cholestasis and jaundice thereby leading to hepatotoxicity so acetylate form of erythromycin should be avoided in pregnancy and other forms such as base and succinate can be safely given during pregnancy clarithromycin as the drugs belong to category C. Just remember, those drugs which belong to category B can be given during pregnancy. And those drugs which belong to category C should not be given during pregnancy. It's better to find an alternative drug. So clarithromycin as it belongs to category C should not be prescribed during pregnancy. And azithromycin and clindamycin as it belong to category B can be prescribed safely during pregnancy. And ciprofloxacin, again the same role as it belongs to C category, it should not be prescribed. And metronidazole can be prescribed, however, it should not be prescribed during first trimester as there is a chance for fetal damage. So that's an exception there. And tetracyclines category D should not be prescribed during pregnancy. That's very important. So this is about various drugs whether they can be prescribed during pregnancy or not and most importantly of all the drugs if you observe penicillins are found to be the safest so it's always better to go for broad spectrum antibiotics such as penicillins during pregnancy now let's see various antibiotics that can be prescribed safely during nursing or breastfeeding so amox and penicillin can be safely administered during nursing also and even erythromycin can be safely administered during nursing and clarithromycin there is no data available regarding its safety in nursing patients so it's better to switch on to an alternative drug instead of going for clarithromycin during uh, breastfeeding and azithromycin the same there is no adequate data available no studies available to support its safety or efficacy in nursing women. And then we have clindamycin. The problem with clindamycin, ciprofloxacin and metronidazole, these three drugs is they diffuse passively into human milk. And as a result of which, the drug concentration can reach to a greater levels in human milk as well as in babies who feed on that milk. So, while prescribing the following drugs, ciprofloxacin, clindamycin and metronidazole, it's better to either find an alternative drug or if we feel that the benefits will outweigh the risk if we prescribe these drugs, then we should advise the mother not to breastfeed her child so that there won't be increase in concentration of these drugs in the child. So while prescribing clindamycin, we should make sure that we advise the patient not to breastfeed her child temporarily and also while prescribing ciprofloxacin the same rule applies and while prescribing metronidazole it's particularly given that when we treat a patient with metronidazole then we should ask the mother not to breastfeed for a duration of 12 to 24 hours after which the concentration of metronidazole in human milk decreases and the mother can go ahead and breastfeed her child. And tetracyclines as they belong to category D should not be prescribed either during pregnancy or during nursing. So to summarize we have different antibiotics belonging to different FDA categories. As a rule of thumb any antibiotic belonging to category B can be safely administered in pregnancy and nursing except clarithromycin, ciprofloxacin and tetracyclines which belong to category C and D respectively and of all these antibiotics penicillins are relatively safe and can be administered during pregnancy and if you observe there is another exception here the estelate form of erythromycin should be avoided during pregnancy as it is associated with hepatotoxicity and Regarding the role of clarithromycin, azithromycin and clindamycin and also ciprofloxacin in nursing, 
no adequate data is available or studies have proved that these drugs have tendency to diffuse passively into human milk thereby entering into child so we should either discontinue this drug find an alternative drug or advise the mother to discontinue breastfeeding for a shorter duration of time which is around 12 to 24 hours in case of usage of metronidazole so this is the overview of various antibiotics in pregnancy and nursing thank you